Okay, so hopefully there's sound here. Uh, so lecture notes on exponentials and logarithms from Math 112. We're going to start with basic exponential rules. Um, unfortunately, Zoom is being a little weird, so um, I have to record this from my own computer where I don't have a touch screen, so I can't write on it, so I'm going to have to type a lot. Um, so anyway, basic exponential rules. So these should be familiar from your previous classes. A and B are bases, N and M are exponents. A times B quantity to the N, you can distribute the N, the power, to both terms. If you have the same base and you're multiplying, you add the powers. If you have the same base, B, and you're dividing, you subtract. If you have something raised to a power raised to another power, you can multiply the two powers and then B to the zero. Well, anything to the zero is one. Anything to the one is just whatever it is. So B to the one is B. So here's some examples. Um, we want to simplify some of these following. So I'm going to type these in. Um, I really should write them, but that's okay. So B to the seventh times B to the fifth. What's that equal to? It's B raised to the seven plus five, right? And that's B to the twelfth. That's this one. B to the 17 divided by B to the six. What's that equal to? How do we work that? Well, when you're dividing, subtract the exponents. That's 17 minus six is 11. Okay. You can do the same thing, even if you have more Bs in the top than in the bottom. So B to the five minus B to the 18, that's B raised to the five minus 18. And what do you get? You get a negative exponent. That's B to the minus 13. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about negative exponents soon. What about B to the third to the fifth? This one. Well, remember that raising something to a power is multiplying it by itself. Oops, b to the three, b to the three, b to the three, one, two, three, four, b to the three, five times, right? So b cubed to the fifth, that's one, two, three, four, five b cubes. How many b's do I have? Well, five times three, that's 15. Okay. Three plus three plus three plus three plus three. Um, so I just multiply the five and the three together. And it's very similar if I have slightly different exponents. Here, I'm just going to break this apart into two parts, right? This is going to be a cubed to the fourth times b squared, oops, to the fourth. So the four applies to both of these, and then a cubed to the fourth is a to the twelfth, and b squared to the fourth is b to the eighth. We're just multiplying the exponents together. As for these two things, anything to the zero is one. Doesn't really matter what it is, no matter how complicated it is. Anything to the one, like 12 to the one, that's just 12. So usually we don't actually, when we have 12 raised to the first, uh, we don't include the one, anything to the first power we don't bother with. So negative exponents, if we have a positive exponent in the bottom, one over b to the n, that's b to the zero over b to the n, because one is anything to the zero is one. B to the zero minus n is b to the minus n. So b to the minus n is the same thing as one over b to the n. And so we want to evaluate some of these things. What are these? Well, let's take, oops, it's not letting me take just this part. There it is. So one half cubed, that's one cubed divided by two cubed. That's one over eight because two cubed is eight. Two to the minus three. I'll just write that out instead of cutting and pasting. What's that? Well, that's one divided by two cubed. Right? That's what the minus sign says. A minus sign the exponent, put it down on those in the fraction. And that's also one over eight. So one half cubed, that's this. 
and 2 to the minus 3, they're the same thing, they're both 1 eighth. These 3 squared times 3 to the minus 5th, that's 3 to the 2 minus, minus 5. I think I have all my parentheses there. All right. Nope. All right. Times means plus, so it's 2 plus minus 5, and that's 3 wedge minus 3, 3 to the minus 3rd, which is 1 over 3 cubed, which is 1 over 27. And finally, it's this thing that's 7 raised to what power? 1 minus minus 2. Division means a minus sign, one minus minus two, but one minus minus two is seven cubed. And if you know what that is offhand, it's, uh, oh, I don't know it offhand, 243. Hopefully that's correct. So there's our um, examples. Uh, fractional powers, just scroll this back up a tad. So what is square root of x? Well, if square root of x is a power, then that means it's x raised to some number, but we don't know what the number is. We do know something about square roots, though, that square root of x squared is x raised to the first. So that means if square root of x is x to the n, if we plug that in for square root of x, what do we get? We get x raised to the n squared is x to the first, but something raised to a power to power, you can just multiply the powers together. So this is x to the 2n equals x to the 1, which means that 2n equals 1, or n equals 1 half. So what's the upshot of that? Roots, square root of x is x to the 1 half power. Cube root of x is x to the 1 third. Fourth root of x is x to the 1 fourth. So fractional powers are roots. And then we can evaluate some of these things by using the power rule. 27 to the 2 thirds, what's that? Well, remember that 2 thirds, Let's do this here. We call 2 over 3 equals 2. Uh, now, where's my times button? It's annoying that they don't actually have it there. 2 times 1 over 3. Right, so 2 thirds is 2 times 1 over 3. So I can break apart my 2 thirds like this. So 27 to the 2 thirds is 27 to the 1 third, quantity raised to the second power. But 27 to the 1 third is 3. So this becomes 3 squared, and that's the thing. So we can do the same thing for these two. What's 16 to the 3 fourths? Well, that's 16 raised to the 1 fourth power. Quantity cubed. So we do the root first, and then we do the power. Now 16 to the 1 fourth is 2. So it becomes 2 cubed, and that's 8. 64 to the 3 halves, same deal, right? We rewrite this as 64 raised to the 1 half power, and then that cubed. And the square root of 64 is 8, and then you cube that. And that's 64 times 8, which is a lot, so I'm not going to write it down. So, um, so that's how you can calculate some of these numbers. Some of these other things, well, we can do these two. How do you handle this? Well, combine the x's, that becomes x raised to the 2 minus 3, that's minus 1, because there's an addition there, times y squared. And the x to the minus 1, a negative power means put it down in the denominator. And it'll be the first power, but we generally don't write the first power. What about this? Well, collect everything. Oh, get all the way to the end of it first. Equals, well, 15 divided by 3 is 5. And then we'll have times, where's my times button? There's my times button. I'm going to need another times button soon. Um, well, let's deal with the x's. I get x raised to the 2 minus quantity minus 2. 
because it's division here. So it's two minus minus two. And then I get y to the fifth, y raised to the fifth power minus the third power. Right? Because the y is five, it's a division, so it's five minus three. So what do we end up with? We end up with five times, how many x's do we have? This is actually x to the fourth. How many y's do we have? We actually have y squared. So you can simplify it like that. The last two involve distributing powers. I'll put those down here. And let's actually move this to a new line. That didn't work. There we go. Okay, so we'll deal with this one first. Two to the x to the fourth equals, well, it's to the minus third, so we need two to the minus three. And I have to go back to my multiplication thingamajig. There it is. Times x to the fourth to the minus three. So really, in a sense, the minus three has to distribute both to this two and to this x to the fourth. So what do we end up with? Well, two to the minus three, the minus three means that we want one divided by two cubed because that has to go into the denominator because it's a negative exponent. And then we have x raised to the minus 12 because four times minus three is minus 12. So to finish that off, we have one divided by, we got the eight from here. And then this minus sign means move the x to the minus 12 down into the bottom and it shows up as a positive 12. What about this one? Same thing. The minus three has to distribute to everything in there. So we get three to the minus three. And then we get x wedge minus two minus three. And then all of that is divided by y to the minus three. Okay. So the minus three power gets applied to each one. Um, multiplying this out a little bit, the three to the minus three goes down into the bottom. The y to the minus three is gonna come up to the top. X to the minus two times minus three, that's gonna give me an x to the sixth. So I have an x to the sixth in the top, and then a y cubed in the top, because this y to the minus three, a negative exponent means move it to the other side of the fraction. And then we'll divide by three to the three, which is a 26. So, so let's throw in a little bit of a warning here. Keep in mind though, that if you have an addition inside your multiplication, that means you're gonna have to foil it out. Oh, sorry, I wanted this to be the minus raised squared. Right, so x plus y quantity squared, when there's an addition inside there, the two doesn't distribute, right? It distributes here because it's only multiplication, only multiplication and division. But here there's an addition. That means you have to multiply out x plus y times x plus y. And if you foil that out, you get that. And so there's a middle term that you cannot forget, the outer and the inner. So that's the basics of exponents. Um, Next time we'll continue with exponential graphs. So let's see what I can do.